In this video, we will solve mixture problems where we don't know the starting amount. Again, with two variables, the equation will come not just from the last column, but also from the first column. So let's take a look at an example where we can use our mixture table and these two equations. Here, a chemist needs to create 100 milliliters of a 38% acid solution. You know, the amount times the part is going to equal the final. We need to be careful here. This 100 milliliters of 38% is what the chemist wants at the end. This is the final amount and the final part as a decimal, 0.38. On hand, this chemist has a 20% acid solution, that's the part on the first, and a 50% acid solution, the part on the second. We don't know the amounts on the two of them, so let's call them x and y. We can quickly calculate our finals now as 0.2x, 0.5y, and 38, multiplying together the amount times the part. As before, we can always pull an equation off the last column. This gives us 0.2x plus 0.5y equals 38. However, we need one more equation when there's two variables involved. This is where the first column comes in handy. x plus y, adding the two individual amounts, will equal the total amount of 100. We can now solve this equation using the addition method. Let's multiply the first equation by negative 0.2 to eliminate the x's. The first equation is still 0.2x plus 0.5y equals 38. The second equation now is negative 0.2x, negative 0.2y equals negative 20. When we add these together, we're left with 0.3y equals 18. Finally, we can divide both sides by 0.3 to find out that y is equal to 60. Still need to find x, and we can find this by plugging our y value into the original equation. x plus y, or x plus 60 equals 100. Subtracting 60 tells us that x, or the amount of the second, is 40. To get the desired result, Remember, x was the 0.2, or the 20%. We need 40 milliliters at 20%, and y was at 50%, 60 milliliters at 50%. By using the first and last column, and keeping very careful track of what is the final solution, we can quickly solve these mixture problems. In part two of this video, we will solve one more example where we can see this work out.